Okay, if your student is a 2R level reader, um, the biggest thing that they need to be working on is to make sure that they have those active reading habits. So those active reading habits look like these 10 numbered pieces here. So they're working on how to figure out three and four syllable words that are familiar from everyday speech, including names. They're trying different sounds for the letters or chunks in a new word until uh, they're able to recognize the word. They're using prefixes and suffixes to figure out words, such as un, re, miss, full, ubble, shin, li, ear, and east, just to name some. Um, they're also stopping and self-correcting when something doesn't look right, sound right, and making, um, or making sense. Finishing at least one to our chapter book every week. So the goal is, whatever level that you're at, you should be able to read a book at your level and finish it within one week. Visualize as you read books with few or no illustrations, because going from 2R to white level means they're going to be probably a little bit less pictures, just focusing more on the text itself. Um, seven, read fluently and with expression using punctuation, so that means pausing with the commas, stopping with punctuation such as periods, exclamation points, and question marks. And when you see those question marks, you're going to say it with a little bit of intonation in your, in your voice. So if this were a question using punctuation or using punctuation or using punctuation. Eight, read silently for at least 30 minutes without getting tired. So at school during our early time, we have 30 uninterrupted minutes of just silent reading. And the kids are really good at that. So they should be able to also sit at home, find a spot and read for those 30 uninterrupted minutes. Number nine, read at home for at least 30 minutes every night. So this skills card is, the idea is number eight is doing, we're doing this at school and number nine is we're doing this at home. But because this is something that we're using to help support you at home, um, kids can do this at home and at school home also. And then number 10 is reading fiction, nonfiction, poetry, plays, fables, and folktales. So making sure that they're getting a really good a variety of different kinds of texts and not just the graphic novels, not just the comic like books, not just facts and information, but lots of different kinds of books. All right, so when it comes down to comprehension, they're looking to support answers with evidence from the text. So we're working on how can we answer, but also pulling evidence from the text itself. So once they're reading a book, we need to be able to ask ourselves, is this fiction or informational? But also, how do you know what in the book itself tells you that it is fake fiction or information trying to give you information or facts? OK, but also answering why, how and what if questions. Number three, what connections can you make to your own life? So if you're reading a nonfiction book about bugs, maybe have you ever seen this book? Have you ever picked one up? And if you're reading a fiction book, maybe about um, Benji the dog. Have you ever had a pet dog? Have you ever had a pet named Benji? Just maybe finding connections to the book itself and your life. And number four, what did the author do well in writing this book? Um, we kind of want to go beyond they wrote a book that was fun, but what specifically was fun about the book? Or if you like the pictures, what about the illustrations added to the text itself? All right, so if students are reading a fiction or a literature book, while they're reading, and my um, strategy is if they're reading a chapter book, every chapter, read these questions and you should be able to answer. And if for some reason you are unable to answer any of these questions, you need to go back, reread the chapter, and then you should be able to answer those questions once again. For nonfiction text, again, doing the same thing if it is, again, a chapter book. If they're not chapter books, they're uh, maybe just picture books, then every about six to eight pages, I would stop and kind of ask those questions, ask these questions to make sure that they're understanding what they're reading. Reading should be fun, but also should be something that you understand because that adds to the enjoyment. All right, so for literature, if you're reading a fiction book, a uh, book on maybe poetry, um, you need to be able to retell the story in three sentences. So say, stating something that happens in the beginning, something that happens in the middle, and then of course, something that happens in the end or towards the end. Describe the main characters. We're going back 
beyond the aesthetics, not just what they look like, but how can you relate to the person and what is it about that person that makes them relatable? So describing the character could be tall, kind, smart, but what makes that person smart? Thinking above um, what the text says, but how we can infer and make those guesses based off of what we're hearing and seeing in the book. How do they react to events in the story? Okay, so we're getting to know a lot about the characters in the story. Describe the setting, where, and when the story takes place. So if the story takes place at a beach, but doesn't say specifically what time of year or in what time specifically of the day or a month or something, then just focusing on where the story takes place. Reading a good part out loud using different voices for different characters. That's important because it really does create a lot of nice places where you can take reading. It can really become a nice little fun outlet for students of all ages. And then finally, what is the lesson or moral of the story and how do you know? So what is the big idea? The author probably wrote this book because he or she wanted to share what and how do you know? And then for informational texts. Um, working on telling the main idea and details that support it, again, and details that support it is a big thing that we're working on in fourth grade. Kids are really great, really awesome at figuring out the main idea. But then also now pulling details. Emphasis on the S at the end, which makes it plural, that means more than one. Details that support it. So we're looking for two, if not three or more details that support the main idea. So if the main idea of the informational text is that bugs are helpful to the environment, then you need to be able to pull two or three different details in the text that tell us, yep, this is why that bug helps the environment. This is another detail that tells us more about why it's helpful to the earth. What text features does your book have for finding information quickly? And then show how you can use them. So we have lots of text features. The kids are pros at figuring out what the text features are in the book. Uh, some text features are page numbers, bold print, vocabulary glossary, table of contents. So pretty much anything that adds to the text or the reading portions itself is, um, is a text feature. Okay. Uh, what did you learn from your reading? So informational text, those nonfiction pieces, it's really easy to pick up. Oh, this is about this. So just telling me or saying just one thing that you really were able to learn uh, from the book today. And what was what was fact and what was opinion and how do you know? So again, kids are really great at pointing out fact from opinion, but then the how do you know piece is how do you know it is fact? How do you know it's opinion? And then finally, what questions do you have? So informational text really does lend itself to being just open for lots of research type questions following. So this is a really nice time for you to reflect and see where you want to take a little bit more research onto what you want to do past that reading of the book. All right, so on the back side of this 2R skills card is, um, so these are the words that we should be able to know from everyday speech. So a lot of this is sounds that we have in a lot of these kinds of words. So like I says E, raid the E, O, has an I, but it sounds like an E, okay? I that says I, I and tist, okay? Vowel split where we have two right next to each other, but they have one sound Cree, next sound eight. And then the Y says the E, celebrity so at the end. And Y says I, simplify, okay? Um, so just recognizing words, sounding them out, and realizing that sometimes the letters don't always say its sound or its letter name, but that it does can does and can say different sounds and names. Also the SI says shh and so on and so forth. So I will be taking a picture of both front and back and letting you know if you don't already know who and which students are at which reading level. Again, so this is the 2R skills card. These are things that kids should be looking at going over while they're reading. So if you are um, unfamiliar with this, now you have a little bit more information, but the kids should be very uh, comfortable and knowledgeable with sharing with you what these things are and how they're using them while reading. Okay, this is 2R. Thanks.